Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, I'm Mia. Today, we are going to explore a piece of code for a virtual keyboard component written in React. It mimics a basic numeric keyboard and plays a clicking sound effect when a key is pressed. If you're watching my video tutorial for the first time, please remember to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you won't miss out on each exciting episode. Let's dive into today's video tutorial. Firstly, create the basic HTML framework code. Here, we will define the project's font and the basic CSEs and J's files. In this project, the Bayerheim font from Google Fonts is referenced, and the Reset CS is also externally linked. The most important part is that we will render and display the script J's in a modular way. After completing the HTML framework, the next step is to create the J's files. First, we import React and Reactum from a CDN. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network, which allows our application to load faster. Next, we define two custom hooks, useSTATE and usound. UseState is a wrapper around React's useState hook, returning an object with add, remove, and has methods, which are used to manipulate a JavaScript set. The use sound hook takes a URL as a parameter, creates a new audio object, and returns an object with play, and stop methods to play, and stop methods to play, and stop sound effects.
Then, we define some basic components, including key, column, and row. These components represent the keys, columns, and rows of the keyboard respectively, especially the key component. It accepts char, span, and active as props, which represent the character on the key, whether to span columns, and whether it is pressed. Now, let's take a look at the main keyboard component. It first uses the U-Sound hook to initialize the keyboard key sound effects. Then, it uses the U's state hook to track the currently pressed keys. After that, we add event listeners to respond to keyboard press and release events. Finally, each key on the keyboard is an instance of the key component, defined according to the layout of the keyboard. And we use Reactum's render method to render the keyboard component into the body element of the page.
Having completed the JS code, the next step is to start CSS code development. In our CSS code, we first set the styles for the HTML and body tags. These are the top level elements of our HTML document. We set the width and height to 100% choose the default font family as Beierheim and set the background color to light blue. Also, we used Flexbox to align elements in the center and set a perspective distance for subsequent 3D transformations. Next is the keyboard class, which is the overall style of the keyboard. We achieve a tilted visual effect by setting 3D transformations. Meanwhile, to enhance realism, we set the background color, border radius, padding, inner shadow, etc. The Keyboard Shade class represents the shadow part of the keyboard. We used Linear Gradient, Blur Filter, and some 3D transformations to simulate a real shadow effect. The keyboard cover class represents the surface cover of the keyboard. We chose a transparent background and some inner shadow to simulate surface gloss.
In CSS, the row class represents each row on the keyboard. We implemented the keyboard layout using flexbox and set gaps and shadow effects. For rows that are not the first row, we set the filter effect to create shadows below through the row, not first child class. The key class defines the style of each key, including position, size, 3D transformation, and transition effects.
The key active class represents the state when the key is pressed. There would be different 3D transformation effects. The key char class is used to set the style of the character on the key. and the key side and key top classes are used to define the sides and top of the key to create a 3D effect. Great job. This is our virtual keyboard. It will produce a visual effect and play a keyboard click sound when a key is pressed and released. Sounds exciting, doesn't it? That's all for today's content. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to receive more programming and code breakdown videos. See you next time.